Hey everybody, this is Russ from Metro Game Core. 2024 has been a crazy year when it comes to retro handhelds. On this channel alone, I think I've reviewed nearly 50 of them this year. And so like I've done in previous videos, I want to round up all of my favorites to kind of consolidate all of that into one tiny package. Now the categories this year are going to be a little bit different. Usually I go by price point and we are going to talk about price, but I'm also going to add in some new categories, things like, you know, size and form factor. I think all of these are really excellent talking points as well. And so the way I'm looking at it, if you are completely confused by all the different options that you have available on the market, this video will help narrow that down a bunch. And if you're one of the people who, you know, know about all of these different handhelds, this will be more of a celebration of all the great releases we've had in 2024. And for every handheld that I mention, I've got an in-depth review and often a guide for it as well on this channel. And so I'll have all that stuff linked down in the video description below. Anyway, we got a lot of ground to cover. So grab your favorite snack and drink and let's go ahead and get started. Okay, we're going to start out small, literally, and then work our way up. So the first category is going to be micro handhelds. And for this category, I'm talking about handhelds that have a screen size that is less than 3.5 inches. Now for all these categories, I'll give a couple runners up before the actual final pick. So my first runner up here is going to be the GKD Pixel. This is a tiny metal handheld that is really charming and super pocketable. This is one that also took a while to really come into its own. At first, the software was really wonky, but a couple custom firmware options later, and we now have something that's a lot more workable. Another small handheld on a similar path is the Miu A30. This one is a horizontal handheld made by the same people that made the Miu Mini. This one also had similar software issues that were later fixed. We'll talk about that in a different category. But the best thing about this one is the price. You can usually find it for around $30, and I think that is an excellent deal. But there's been a new micro handheld on the scene that has really captured my heart. It's called the Trimui Brick. And even though this one just released in the past month, it is easily my favorite micro handheld of 2024. This one has a simple and elegant design style that reminds me of a smaller analog pocket. And its key feature is this screen. It's 3.2 inches, super sharp and bright, but has a resolution of 1024 by 768. This means that just about any retro game that you play on it is going to look super sharp and clear. It's really a sight to behold. And thanks to the smaller and pocketable micro size of this, you can take it around with you everywhere. And that's exactly what I've been doing over the past month. Now the software options for this are a little bit limited because it is a relatively new handheld, but I bet over the next year or so, we're going to see a lot of new things crop up for it. And it's going to get even better. This will probably be many people's favorite handheld of 2025. Now, moving on, I want to talk about a new category. This is going to be my favorite project handheld of 2024. By this, I mean the kind of handheld that you're going to spend a lot of time tinkering with. Now, jumping into software configurations and trying out other firmwares is probably not something that everyone wants to do, but I have a lot of fun doing that. And so I wanted to make this a category of its own. And really, there are two different types of handhelds that I think were my favorite throughout this year. The first are the Ambernic RGXX line. There's about eight of these devices that were released over the past year, and they all use the same chip set and can use the same firmware. And in particular, these handhelds can run two different operating systems that are really customizable. The first is called Moo OS or Mustard OS, and then another one called Newly, which is based off of Botticera. Both of these custom firmwares really excel in being customizable, so you can change out your overall experience through different themes or just through different configurations. And the best thing about these handhelds is they don't break the bank. You can usually find them for around $50 or $60, and so they're just a lot of fun if you want to get into the world of developing on a Linux-based handheld. However, my favorite overall choice in this category is the TrimUI Smart Pro. And this essentially is just a larger version of the TrimUI Brick that we were just talking about in the last category. This one kind of looks like a retro handheld PSP and has a really nice and beautiful screen on it as well. And so I really enjoy tinkering around with this one too. Like with the RGXX line, this one also has a bunch of different software options. And so I'll leave a guide link down below where I kind of go through all of them. And the thing that sets the Trimui Smart Pro above the others is that it actually has a really great out of box experience as well. And so if you don't want to tinker, you just want to grab this handheld, start jumping into your games. It's really handy in that regard. And then of course, if you ever get the itch to try out something a little bit more customized, then you can do that as well. 
Okay, our next category is going to be my favorite handhelds under $100. And so there's a variety of different handhelds here, but there are certain ones that I think shine above the rest. And honestly, if you're going to be spending around this price point, I think that the Ambernic RGXX line is your best choice. I recently released a video ranking out the eight different devices we've had within this product line over the past year, and each of them have their strengths and weaknesses. But I think among them, I have three clear favorites. The first is going to be the Ambernic RG40XXV. This one is a vertical handheld that again reminds me a bit of the analog pocket. It has a really nice clean and kind of simple aesthetic. It also has a nice big 4 inch screen that has really small bezels on it, so it's really impressive to hold and play. Another XX device that I really like is the RG Cube XX. This one has a square screen, but a 720 by 720 p resolution. And in addition to the screen, we've also got some really comfortable ergonomics, and so I found this to be one of the best devices from this line. However, we're talking about my favorites, and so my number one favorite here of devices under $100 is the Ambernic RG35XX SP. This one's almost a dead ringer for the original Nintendo Game Boy SP, but with a few key upgrades. This chipset's got enough power to be able to play up through a good portion of Nintendo 64 and Dreamcast, and of course all your retro favorites below that. And because it has the same CPU as all the other handhelds within the XX line, that means we can take advantage of all the custom firmware that we were just talking about. For me personally, I've really enjoyed using Moo OS with this handheld. It gives it a really nice and customized experience. And the addition of a clamshell form factor makes it an excellent handheld to play on the go. In a typical use case, I'm going to play my favorite retro games on it, and then when I'm ready to go, I just have to close the lid. That's going to save my game progress, and then also shut the device off. The next time that I'm ready to actually start playing, all I have to do is just open up the clamshell, turn on the power button, and then I'm right back to where I was. And this very simple setup means that I'm just more apt to actually play games on this device, because it's just so easy and convenient. And because it's a clamshell, it's going to be well protected anytime I close it, so I don't have to worry about getting it scratched up in my backpack. And then finally, it has all the creature comforts that I would expect in a handheld at this price point. It's got Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, as well as HDMI video out. Now, it's not a perfect handheld. Like with the other RGXX devices, the charging on it is a little bit wonky. My recommendation is just to use a standard USB-A to USB-C cable and not a fast charger, just one of those old dummy chargers, and usually that'll work out fine. And so long story short, the Ambernic RG35XX SP is my favorite handheld under $100. In fact, it's a lot cheaper than that. You can usually find it for around $70. And really, that's about the same price as a single AAA game, but this one can play thousands of games instead, so it's a really easy handheld to recommend. Now for the next category, I want to talk about some things that are a little bit more niche. So this time around, I want to talk about my favorite screen experience this year. And this probably has to be one of my favorite categories of 2024, because we've had some really excellent screens released on handhelds this year. Let's start with the INEO Pocket DMG. Let me start by saying this is a really expensive handheld. It's going to start around $350 and then go up from there. And so this is definitely not for everybody, but I do love the screen. It is 3.92 inches, so just under 4 inches, and has an OLED panel, and also has a resolution of 1240 by 1080. And this is a super high pixel density, and you can see it in basically any game that you play. It's a really amazing experience. The way I like to describe it is that this is a Game Boy that leveled up with you over the years, and so this screen is just as amazing to look at in 2024 as the original Game Boy was back in 1989. Another handheld with an impressive screen was the INEO Pocket Micro. This one kind of flew under the radar, but I think that its screen was actually really unique. This one is 3.5 inches in a 3 by 2 aspect ratio, and with a resolution of 960 by 640 And this particular aspect ratio works out really well with a lot of retro consoles, and so I found this one in terms of scaling to be one of my favorites to play. So if you're someone who's focused on pixel perfection, you want to have integer scaling with things like Game Boy Advance, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, and Sega Genesis, then the INEO Pocket Micro is actually a pretty great fit. However, hands down, the screen that I've been most impressed with this year is from the Retroid Pocket 5. This one is 5.5 inches AMOLED and with a resolution of 1920 by 1080 And this one to me is almost a perfect match between the size and aspect ratio and resolution. When it comes to playing native 16x9 games, you know, things like PSP or native Android games, or even something like a little bit of a Nintendo Switch, 
all of those will scale perfectly. In addition, this has a bezel-less design, and so if you're going to be playing anything that's a little bit less wide than 16x9, say for example a 4x3 game, then the black bars on the left and right just kind of fade into the rest of the shell. And this is particularly true with the black model, because the black shell itself just kind of fades directly into the OLED screen, and so it's a really beautiful experience. And because it's an OLED panel, that means that the colors are just going to pop, they're super saturated, and so yeah, I really love the Retroid Pocket 5 screen. Next, I want to talk about my favorite handheld designs. So these are not the best handhelds overall, but really just giving props to the design team and what they were able to pull off. Let's start with my first nomination, which is the Retroid Pocket 5. Like I mentioned already, it has that bezel-less design, which really gives this a very sleek form factor. Now, previous Retroid Pocket devices had a little bit more of a toy or kind of plasticky feel, but they really stepped it up with this one and made it more elegant. And initially, I didn't think I would like this design, but once I got it in the hands, I could totally see why they went this route, because it is just a beauty to hold. If I really wanted to impress someone by talking about just the overall quality of retro handhelds in 2024, the Retroid Pocket 5 would be the one that I would hand to someone. Another handheld with excellent design is the Ambernic RG Cube. This one is the more powerful and Android-based brother of the RG Cube XX that we were just talking about a few minutes back. It has that same square screen and those really nice ergonomics, but what I really love about it is just how compact and squished it feels. It feels like you get a lot of handheld for the size, and so I've really liked the overall design, and I think Ambernick agrees because they've kind of copied their own design with two subsequent handhelds. In addition to the RG Cube XX, which is a little bit cheaper and less powerful, we also have the Ambernick RG406H. This one is basically the 4x3 version of the RG Cube, but we will talk about this one more later in the video. Before that, let's talk about my favorite overall design, and this has to be the iNeo Pocket DMG. Now, like I mentioned, this is an expensive handheld, so not one that's easy to recommend, but I do have to give props where they're due, and this one is beautifully designed. The D-pad and face button experience on this handheld, which I think is where you're going to spend most of your time anyway, is just pitch perfect, and so this has been one of my favorite designs of the year just because it feels like an elevated version of the original Game Boy. In fact, the design here is so streamlined and form-fitting that it makes other elegant and high-level devices like the analog pocket feel cheap by comparison. Whether or not you want to spend $350 plus to get this experience is totally up to you, but I think it's worth pausing and recognizing the wonderful design of the iNeo Pocket DMG. Okay, next up I want to talk about my favorite handhelds that are around the $200 price point. So this is when you're ready to kind of level up and get something a little bit more powerful. Again, we've got three different handhelds to talk about. The first is going to be the original Retroid Pocket 4 Pro. This one came out right in the beginning of the year, like the first week of January. And even though it's been mostly overshadowed by the Retroid Pocket 5 at this point, it has been reduced in price. So now it's around $175 plus shipping. And at this price point, you're still getting a lot of handheld. This can play through most GameCube and PS2 games, and of course everything below that as well. So if you're looking for a good all-around handheld that's well under $200, then I think the Retroid Pocket 4 Pro is still worth being in that conversation. Another favorite of mine around that same price point is going to be the Ambernic RG406H. This one looks like an RG Cube, but with a 4x3 screen, with a couple other additional upgrades. It's got a 4-inch LCD panel with a resolution of 960x720, which again is going to be excellent for most retro systems. In addition, it's got quite a bit of power to it, not quite as powerful as the Retroid Pocket 4 Pro, but you can still play most GameCube and PS2 games on this. And then finally, they also upgraded the sticks on this to be hall sensor and have a wide range of motion. And so one of my main complaints about most Ambernic devices is that they use pretty lousy analog sticks, but with the 406H, this one is an exception. And so everything comes together with this one really well. A nice screen, good ergonomics, and nice analog sticks. But still, if you're going to be spending around $200, I do have one choice above it. And this one is the Retroid Pocket 5. We've already talked about it a little bit with the overall screen experience, but also just as an overall handheld, this is an excellent buy. This one has a Snapdragon 865, which for emulation means that you'll play even more PS2 and GameCube games. It also has excellent ergonomics and elegant design, and of course that beautiful screen. Now this one's a bit more expensive, it's about $220 before shipping, but if you're looking to spend around that much money, I think that the Retroid Pocket 5 is your best investment. 
Okay, now that we talked about some of my other favorite categories like size and price point, now I'm ready to get into the meat of this video when we talk about my overall favorites for different sections. So jumping in, we're gonna talk about one of my favorite categories to put together, which is my favorite disappointments of 2024. And what I'm talking about in this category are handhelds that didn't quite hit the mark for me. So maybe I had super high expectations for them, or I found that over time, I just didn't play them that much. We're gonna start with the Ambernic RG406V. Now this one is a vertical handheld and the overall design of it just never really clicked with me. I also had similar issues with the previous model that they released with this exact same form factor, the RG405V. Now this year's model does have some upgrades to it. It's got the same screen and analog sticks as the 406H, which I was just talking about as one of my favorites under 200 bucks. But the thing that just doesn't really sit with me right with the 406V is that it feels rather bloated. I've never really liked this overall design. It has these super chunky grips on the back, which does make it quite comfortable for a vertical handheld, but I've always found this design to be just bloated and a little bit underdeveloped. Another disappointment for me in 2024 was the AYN Odin 2 Mini. And for all intents and purposes, this one probably should have been one of my favorite handhelds of the year, because after all, the Odin 2 has probably been one of my favorite handhelds over recent memory. However, there were two main points to this handheld that kept me from enjoying it as much as I would like. The first is the overall cooling and heat of this handheld. It has a very powerful processor, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. But because it has such a compact size, I found this device heats up quite a bit more than I would like. And so just in the moment when I'm about to get into my favorite game, it starts to heat up to the point where it becomes uncomfortable. And also in a year where we had many available screen options, I found this one to be a little bit underwhelming. It has a mini LED panel, which gets super bright, so it's really good to play outdoors, but the colors also get very washed out and it does suffer from vignetting. And so I did find this five inch screen to be a bit of a downgrade from the previous Odin 2. And so I ended up not playing the mini that much at all and just went back to the original. But my overall favorite disappointment of 2024 is the Retroid Pocket Mini. Now I'm not saying this is a bad device, but it's just one that didn't really click with me the way that I thought it would. In fact, the Retroid Pocket 5 and the Retroid Pocket Mini were announced at the same time. And I went all in with the Retroid Pocket Mini. I pre-ordered that one, got all the accessories, but when it actually arrived, I found myself thinking that man, I think I'm gonna like the Retro Pocket 5 more. And sure enough, that's exactly what happened. And a lot of it just has to do with the incongruence of the Retroid Pocket Mini itself. Even though it's called the Retroid Pocket Mini, I found it quite a bit bigger than I was expecting. It's got some pretty thick grips on the back, which make it not very pocketable, but then also just overall, the screen to body ratio is not great. And so I think in a vacuum, the Retroid Pocket Mini is a fine little handheld. It's got that Snapdragon 865 processor on it. It even has a 3.7 inch OLED display. But I never really found anything that this handheld does better than the other options out there. And often I found myself using it and thinking to myself, I'd rather just be playing the Retroid Pocket 5 right now. And so this is why the Retroid Pocket Mini is my favorite disappointment of 2024. It's an excellent little handheld, but just not one that's gotten a lot of playtime from me. Next, I want to talk about the most improved handhelds of 2024. These maybe had a bit of a rocky launch, but over time they got better and better. My first nomination is the Mio A30. When this one first launched, it had all sorts of issues, both from a software and hardware perspective. And over time, I've seen that both of those aspects have improved. The more recent releases of the Mio A30 from a hardware perspective have a much better control feel. In addition, we've seen some software improvements, including one called Spruce, that have really transformed this device. And so now it's on the list of one of my favorite micro handhelds of the year, when previously I wouldn't have recommended it. We've also seen a similar experience with the Trim UI Smart Pro. Initially, this one was a little bit underwhelming when it came to the software and the overall hardware experience. But again, they've made revisions to the hardware, and we've had a bunch of new software options that have really upped the game. But I would say that the most improved handheld of 2024 for me is the Lenovo Legion Go. This one launched late last year, and it was actually pretty unique. It had a big old screen on it, it detachable controllers, and also a kickstand. But I did feel it wasn't a perfect handheld at launch. It had all sorts of software bugs, but then also the controls were not very good. Well, fast forward about six months, and most of those grievances just kind of went away. Software updates did a lot in terms of fixing the overall performance, as well as including integer scaling, which has been one of my favorite features with this screen. In addition, community fixes have done things like improve the overall audio profile, but then probably most importantly for me, 3D printed grips really transform the control experience of this handheld. And so over the course of 2024, the Lenovo Legion Go went from a handheld that I didn't really recommend to one of my favorites when it came to a larger handheld PC. And I made a whole video about this experience. I will leave it linked down below. 
Okay, we've got three more categories to go. Next up is going to be my most played handheld of 2024. So these handhelds didn't necessarily release in 2024, but they're the ones that I played the most. Let's start with the Ambernic RG35XX SP. This one did release this year, but I have been playing it a bunch. In fact, it basically just lives in my backpack, so I can grab it at any time. Ever since it first launched, I've taken it with me on every single trip that I've gone on, which I think says a lot. And again, most of this just has to do with its portability and the fact that it's clamshell, so I can just kind of chuck it wherever and I don't have to worry about it getting damaged. The next handheld that I played a bunch this year was the ROG Ally X. This one came out over the summer, and I found that I ended up replacing my Steam Deck with this one, and that's a pretty tall order. When it comes down to it, this one has an 80 watt hour battery, which means that I don't get a lot of battery anxiety when playing this device. I can play it for hours at a time, and it still holds its charge. In addition, I've set it up with dual boot, both Windows and Linux. And so this gives me the best of both worlds, that I can jump into the primary Windows experience, but if I want to get a more Steam Deck like experience, I can get that within Bazite as well. However, if we're talking about the sheer amount of hours that I spend with any handheld, then the AYN Odin 2 is my top pick. The Odin 2 came out late last year, and it's got a powerful Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 processor inside, which means that basically anything that you want to play on Android can play on this handheld. I mostly use it for high-end emulation, GameCube, PS2, Wii U, and as well as Switch. But it's also an excellent streaming handheld as well, and so I found this to be an excellent overall all-round pick. And so the Odin 2 has been my middle ground handheld, not quite as small and compact as the SP, and obviously not as beefy and powerful as the ROG Ally X, but this one is just right. And I think this overall combination of 6-inch screen and powerful processor just makes it easier to pick up and play, and so this is definitely my most played handheld of 2024. However, the fact that the Odin 2 is my most played handheld really comes down to timing, because lately I've been playing the Retroid Pocket 5 more. And of course it really comes down to release timing, because the Retroid Pocket 5 just came out over the past month, and so it doesn't have that full year of gameplay like the Odin 2 does. So I'm really interested to see what my gameplay is going to look like in 2025, because I think going forward I will probably spend more time with the Retroid Pocket 5 than the Odin 2. And this really leads into my next big category, which is going to be my easiest to recommend handhelds of 2024. And bear in mind that this category is a little bit different than an overall favorite. That's going to be our last category. We'll get to that in a moment. Instead of what I'm talking about here is those that are easy to recommend at various price points. And I really see this as being a three-tier approach. We've got like our really cheap and budget throwaway handhelds. We've got our kind of middle of the pack handheld, and then that really nice high-end experience. And again, because we're talking about the easiest to recommend recommend handheld, this specifically is talking about those that are kind of plug and play, a little bit easier to get up and running. And in that cheaper category, I think it goes back to that Ambernic RGXX line. There's a ton of different options there, but among them, obviously, the SP is my favorite. This one has a ton of different software options, but honestly, the stock operating system is also good enough. I've got a full written guide that'll walk you through the entire setup for it, but when it comes down to it, this one probably will give you the most bang for your buck. Because the operating system resides directly on the SD card, you can make multiple different SD cards with multiple different operating systems to kind of try them out and see which one works out best for you. And so I do find that the Ambernic RGXX line is easily the most versatile option out there. We've got a bunch of different shapes and forms, but then also a bunch of different software options as well. Now when it comes to your middle of the pack option, I think that the Retroid Pocket 5 is your best bet there. Not only does it have a nice price to performance ratio, but it also has a couple different software options. This is primarily an Android based handheld, which does take quite a bit of work to get up and running, but the beauty about the Retroid Pocket 5 is that it can also dual boot into Linux. And setting this up with Linux is actually a little bit easier than trying to do the whole Android setup. You can just flash a micro SD card, boot into that card, and then most of the stuff will be pre-configured for you. At that point, you just have to add your games and away you go. Now to be fair, some of this is a little bit aspirational because the Retroid Pocket 5 is still a new release, so the Linux-based operating systems still need time to mature. But regardless, I find the Retroid Pocket 5 to be an easy recommendation because you can just go the whole Android route, but then also try out Linux if you want as well. And then finally, on that high-end gaming experience, I think that the regular old Steam Deck is still the easiest handheld to recommend. The starting price for this is around $400, even though I do recommend getting the OLED model if you can afford it, and this really has a nice console-like experience when it comes to a handheld PC. In fact, if you're just looking to get in and out of your PC games, then the Steam Deck is still a clear winner against all the other options on the market. Now personally, I'm a bit more tech-savvy, and I don't mind messing around with Windows, and so I do personally prefer to use the 
ROG Ally X right now, but I think in terms of recommendations, the Steam Deck is still the way to go. Okay, now we're ready for the last category. This is my favorite overall handheld of 2024. And as you can imagine, I went back and forth about this category more than any of the other categories combined, and that mostly had to do with the fact that there were just so many great options coming out this year. But when all is said and done, my favorite release of 2024 was the Ambernic RG35XXSP. Among all the various excellent choices that we had this year, this is the one that gave me just a little flutter of joy every time I picked it up all year long. There are so many things that I love about it, the clamshell form factor, the variety of different color options that you can buy, and we've got so many software options out there that you can really personalize your experience, which is one of my favorite things about these types of retro handhelds. And one of the things that helped me choose this one as my favorite overall is the fact that when it comes to buying a new handheld for one of my friends, it's usually the SP that I pick up just because it is such an easy experience. I really can't put into words how nice it is to play a game and then just close the lid when you're done with it. It's going to save your progress and you can jump right back into it later. This really captures the overall spirit of a retro handheld to me, that we can kind of integrate it into our busy lives to be able to get a few moments of retro gaming here and there, and the XP has probably been the best conduit of that experience in 2024. And like I mentioned before, this is not a perfect handheld. In fact, none of the handhelds in this list are. They each have their own room for improvement. But that's also one of the exciting things about this hobby, is that these little retro handhelds keep getting better and better with every release. And I can't wait to see what 2025 has in store for us. In fact, in fact, as I'm wrapping up this video, Ambernic is already launching another Game Boy Advance style handheld, which I think will probably be pretty popular as well. And really, that's about it for this video. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Of all the handhelds that came out this year, did you pick any of them up? And if so, which one did you get? And do you like it? Or do you think that something else would have been a better fit? And if you're brand new to all this stuff and you're looking to pick up your very first handheld, that I hope that this video was helpful in narrowing it down. I'll have links to all my in-depth reviews and guides in the video description, so you can dig a little bit deeper if you would like before making that purchase. As always, thank you for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful, and we will see you next time. Happy gaming.